you ready to master latte art? I'll show you the tips, the tricks, and how you can practice to become a pro. Welcome back to our masterclass series on milk. Today, we are gonna be focusing on latte art. I'm gonna be covering the different techniques that you're gonna to need to practice so that you can do those really delicate patterns and also the basics. I'll show you how to pour a heart really beautifully and there's a couple of really cool tricks that I'm gonna show you at the end that will allow you to keep practicing and not waste heaps of milk. So the first thing I wanna talk about is milk. Funnily enough, we need to know what product we're dealing with. We want to use a full cream milk to do any of our practice. We don't want to be using an alternative milk or a skim milk at the early stages when you're trying to learn. It just makes things a little bit trickier. The main reason is they're higher in sugar. That sugar becomes a bit more meringue and it can separate. So start with a full cream milk. I also want you to be frothing at a cooler temperature. It is far easier to get a beautiful glossy milk that you can pour a nice pretty pattern with at a lower temperature. I know you might not enjoy it, but yes, it is going to be better if you stick around that 60 degree mark on milk. Again, I do it a little bit cooler, but it does make it a lot easier to work with. So to master it, stay cooler, get really cool foam. If you haven't quite mastered those, check out our other videos because they will take you through the progression to join us here now to become a pro. So we've got milk, I've got a chocolate shaker, that's gonna be a little tip for later. Your favorite milk jug. I'm just gonna keep it simple with a nice 400 ml jug and your favorite cup. We're gonna do everything in just a normal 220 ml standard cup. It's pretty easy to work with and there's a couple of little things that we wanna talk about on how we pour into this cup to make it look perfect every time. So for today's latte art session, we are going to use the Ferrari of coffee machines, the Lamazocco Linear Mini. If you're not familiar with this machine, check it out on our other videos, it'll tell you all about it. Quick summary, double boiler machine, so we have one boiler specific for steam, then we have another boiler which we can control the temperature for the espresso extraction. It's plumbable, uh, it's just a beautiful piece of engineering, and to be honest, for me, it gives the best steam that I can froth milk with. Even better than the commercial models. Now that's a big call, but I love this. It is just the my go-to to do latte art. So, let's begin. When I'm talking about latte art, I'm talking about free poured latte art. There are a lot of people out there that can use a thermometer and make really nice pretty pictures. I'm just focusing on the pouring. And that is how we control the foam that we've created, the beautiful microphone, and how we're blending that with the crema of the coffee to get a two-tone pattern on the top of that cup. Now I know a lot of people think that that is just a waste of time and why would you do it? If you get a beautifully poured latte art, you're gonna get a little bit of that coffee flavor and a beautiful bit of that sweet microphone. And if it's nicely layered from a beautiful rosetta, it's just gonna be tasty. So. One of the first things I want to address about a cup. We are left-handers and right-handers. Now, what I want you to do if you're a right-hander and you're pouring with the jug in your right hand is hold the handle of the cup. If you turn it on its side and we've got our clock face, so 12, three, six, and nine. When we're pouring, we want to be starting down at six and as we straighten up our cup and finish, we want to finish at 12 o'clock. We always want to keep that handle at nine o'clock. That means that when we present our pattern on a, to a customer or wherever we're going to put it, the pattern is up the right way for a right-hander. So if you're a left-hander, what you need to do is turn the cup around and hold it from underneath. And the clock face is just reversed. We're still pouring from six o'clock and finishing at 12 and your pattern will be poured out backwards 
and as you turn that around it'll be the same as a right hander now I'm going to try a bit later I can pour left handed and right handed so I can give you a full demo on that but I can guarantee you my left handed pour is not as good as the right we'll test it out so to keep it simple I've narrowed it down to five techniques that I want you to learn and these techniques are what you're going to be using for a whole range of patterns and look there's a lot more but this is going to get you up to the stage of a heart, a rosetta, tulips, stacking hearts and even like a, a swan or a floating heart. Those techniques are how we go in and out of the cup very quickly to get a blob to go in. When we're actually pouring low and we've got a blob, how we can push that blob forward. Then how we can actually wiggle and push forward. Then there's wiggling and pulling backwards away from the actual pattern. And then there is the pull through, which is the nice thin liquid that we pour through a pattern to make it come together and look exactly how we want to. So after watching our other videos, you're gonna have beautiful milk ready to do this. We've got our espresso, we've got our milk, which is resting. And again, you can see up the side how beautiful that milk is. You can see the consistency of the bubbles. So, the first technique we're gonna do is how we get in and out of that cup with a blob. So swirl our espresso, we tilt our cup to get a nice big deep vessel of water, we keep our milk spinning, and we're gonna kinda of throw this blob in, to go in and under, okay? So we don't want that to float. We don't wanna to go too slow, because we're going to create a slide for that nice light foam to go across the top of the surface. And we don't want to be so fast that we flip all of that crema over. So it's kind of like a little duck pecking in and out of a, a cup. It's just in, pour out, in, pour out, in, pour out, okay? And you can sort of see I'm doing a bit of a pattern, but we're going to come back to that. So I just want you to be able to practice pouring straight in and coming back out. Straight in, coming back out. You can do that quite a few times if you need to in the one cup. Okay, so our second technique is the blob and push. So we're going to swirl our cup. We're going to pour in like the first step, in and low to get the blob in, get around the cup, move to a blob, and you can see how far we can push that blob. Blob, and you can push that blob. Blob and you can push it. So, you can see that that first blob, I managed to go from the center of the, the cup all the way to the edge. And you can keep pushing a blob. So, it's a constant, nice, steady flow coming out of the jug, but you are actually progressing forward at the same time, and you'll start to see that movement in the actual cup. So the next technique is the wiggle and pushing forward. So that's going to create the base of a lot of our different patterns. Again, swirling the cup, tilting it to get an angle, pouring in and getting that crema to, uh, pouring in to get that milk to dive in and under. Going around the cup to create a base. And we're wiggling, but I'm pushing forward. And you can see that that collapsed all of them together. It also allowed these outer rings to pop out nice and wide. If you start to pull back too early, that is not going to happen. And that's a really interesting technique that I need you to understand. Wiggling and push forward before you actually start to come back. And I'll show you why. Now, a lot of people make this Christmas tree and they don't understand why they can't make the beautiful Rosetta. It's because they're not wiggling and pushing forward before they wiggle and push backwards. And I'll show you here now. Tilt the cup, get in there, and go around. And if I just start to wiggle and pull back, we didn't get the reaction in this cup. We didn't get the wings to pop out and around. And that's how you get a Christmas tree. The other thing you've got to think about when you're going backwards is you need to be the same width left and right when you're actually wiggling. Now a lot of people think it's a side to side wiggle 
but it's actually a pivot that's happening in the jug. You're pivoting left and pivoting right. And that's gonna give you that beautiful um, leaf that's gonna be consistent size as you progress backwards through your pour. I do love the steam from Alinea Mini. It's so dry, it's crisp. It makes beautiful milk. Don't forget to purge, wipe and look after your machine. So, I'm going to combine those first four steps together and then show you the nice thin pull at the end. So we've got our espresso, we're going to swirl our cup, we're going to swirl our milk, we're going to tilt the cup, get in there, blob, get around the cup just to break in some of that crema. We're going to start to wiggle and push forward, we're going to come back and then the nice thin little line on its way through. Okay, so we're lifting up and it's just a nice thin line and you can see that started to pull in the actual pattern nicely. It wasn't a big fat blob and you do want to have not much milk left in there. Even though you want to make it a nice looking cup, it's got to be a tasty cup, so don't over froth that milk as well. So with those five techniques, I'm going to make it a little bit easier on myself and pour into a mug. It's going to be a lot more time and a lot more room to be able to do these techniques. All right, here we go. Swirling our milk. Make sure you give it a little bit of time to settle. It does make life a lot easier. Okay, here we go. So, tilt the cup. We're going to pour in. Go a blob, get around that cup. Start to wiggle. Push forward, push back, stop, go low, and pull through. Now I did say earlier that I can pour left-handed, so let's give it a go. Swirl our milk, swirl our cup, okay. Not too bad. So, I promised you earlier in the video a way to be able to practice your latte art without using a lot of milk. And it's really simple. You just need your chocolate shaker, your favorite cup, your favorite jug, and a bit of froth milk. So, let me froth it up. And I'll show you how you can practice lots of different patterns and the techniques. I'm just getting a nice, frothy jug here. I don't want it too hot. I don't want to separate this foam. Now, what we're going to do, we'll come on in close. We're going to pour a bit of thin milk. We're going to dust it slightly with chocolate. Now we're going to swirl our milk and get it ready. We're going to swirl it so that that chocolate is melted nicely. Okay, now you can see I didn't dust that really heavy with chocolate. So that gives you a bit of a um, easier palette to work with. When you're done, simply pour it back in again. Tidy up your mess because it does make a bit of mess. Tap out your bubbles, pour a bit more milk. Now the better you get, the more chocolate that you can put in there. Tap. Swirl, get that chocolate melted again, and go again. Okay, and let's go again.
Now, as you go along, you'll notice that the foam gets less and less. So you can make sure you've got a really foamy, um, but nice microphone and a good volume of it. Essentially, they're gonna keep popping as you do more and more copies. The good thing is, you can actually just pour it back out because you didn't start really hot and froth again. And you just pick your pattern and you can keep going over and over and over again. So I hope that helps you practice your latte art without having to waste obviously a lot of milk. So with this video, I've been using a really basic 995 small jug. It's not the jug that I like to use. This is my favorite jug I use at home all day every day, it's beaten up. It's a very similar jug, but a big difference. If you look at the pouring spout, they are very different. This is a much more narrow spout and has a pointy finish to it, where this has a, a waterfall style spout. And it is a bit harder to pour with. So I'm gonna make a coffee, because I need one, and I'll show you what I would be making for myself. And I'm gonna talk you through that pattern as well. Okay, so we're just gonna do a nice, easy heart. It's gonna combine all those different things that I've spoken about. Well, the cup, so pour in, go round and round the cup. We're gonna get a blob nice and low, wiggling, pushing forward. Then we're gonna stop, lift up, and pull through. Now you're gonna notice on that cup, those lines are so much finer. And it's because of the tip in that jug. It allows you so much more accuracy. And that's what I love. I love that jug. It's definitely the one that I can do my best art from. Um, in the video, you'll see me trying to do techniques that probably are a bit hard with a different type of jug. But you're gonna find the jug that you love, whether it's a black jug that has a pointy spout, or whether it's a, it's a motor which has this really deep spout. So once you find the jug you love and the one that you can handle, you're really gonna be able to nail that's a pretty perfect patterns. So thanks very much guys. I hope you've enjoyed this masterclass on how to uh, do latte art. Obviously it's a beginner's base uh, lesson which is gonna build the foundations for our future videos. So I hope you love this video. If you did, make sure you like it. Give us a comment if you've got a question. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button and you'll be notified when the next video comes out on our Milk Masterclass. Cheers guys, have an awesome day.